<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no more fooling around. Chelsea Football Club, it's time to get serious. Chelsea versus Luton. Um, I'm nervous and I don't, I shouldn't be, you know, but I'm so scarred off the back of that West Ham performance in the second half. I can't help but being nervous, but it's got to be a slapping. It's got to be an absolute slapping. We need to take care of Luton like none other. No more funny business in the lineup. Let's get serious and let's really try and, you know, rectify this bit of a mess up of a start that we've had so far. It's time to put things right. I, I cannot, I cannot have a similar season like last season. We we need to start waking up ASAP. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. Welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Look, uh Chelsea versus Luton at Stamford Bridge. You'd think it's a straightforward situation, but we find ourselves in this predicament where it's been it's been a bit bit of a funny start. Um, obviously, injuries have played a massive role as well. And on top of that, now we've got another injury, ladies and gentlemen. Michaela Mudrik is injured, but potentially he's not out for too long. Apparently, he's picked up a knock, but he'll definitely miss the Luton match, which scares me to think that. Is Pochettino again going to use Ben Chilwell on their left side? So we'll do the lineups and whatnot very soon. I'll show you my lineup, what I would like to see, and then I'll also show you what I think predicted sort of lineup that's going to be from Pochettino's side. So we'll see what happens there. For me, ladies and gentlemen, this needs to be a huge victory. It cannot just be a, you know, just sort of falling over the line, just making it a 1-0 or a 2-1, a scrappy match. This needs to be a match where we start showcasing all facets of our game. Strong in defense, strong in midfield, going forward, scoring goals. People like Nicholas Jackson, they've got to start putting some goals in, but at the same time, they've got to start getting service to him as well. As many you know, opportunities that we can create. And on top of that, as many people that we can rush into the box because that is a huge problem. Nicholas Jackson all by himself up front is not going to cause all the damage. It's too easy to, you know, put two, three defenders around him. You have to have other players to support and crash the box so they can they can assist and, and help out in scoring as well, much like what Chukamika did against West Ham. In midfield, there should be no more excuses. <laughs> Gone are those days, ladies and gentlemen. The excuses days, oh, we don't have this profile, that profile. No, you've got now every profile. You've re literally got every profile. I know Lee Wako, uh, I'm sorry, um, Romeo Lavia is not going to be ready for this particular match. He's not injured. He's just not up to speed of things because he's not had a proper preseason with Southampton. So he's going to take a bit of time. That's fine. But Moses Kaisido, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, is ready to play. So, and apparently, you know, he should be a lot more better than what he was against West Ham uh, this time around. A week, you know, full of training uh, should bring him up to speed. I know he's another one of those players who didn't have a proper preseason with Brighton. Obviously, at the end, started missing games for Brighton as well because of the potential move to Chelsea. But now, you know, Enzo Fernandez. Caicedo in midfield, you should get a lot of balance. So there shouldn't be any problems about that. And in defense, look, it's up to us. If we want to keep playing, you know, three CBs, Colwell, Silva, Desarci, and we also want to play Chilwell, Malagusto, that's on us. This is Luton. This is Luton. No disrespect, but at the same time, yes, disrespect. Do you know what I mean? Like, we need to go out there and absolutely slap them up. I know some Luton fans will be like, ah, oh, look at this guy talking. No, we have to. We have to. Because we are a bit of a laughing stock. Not just within our fan base, but across the rivals as well. We're a bit of a laughing stock, and we need to change this reputation. We drop points here. I think everyone's going to be on hiding. Like as if everyone wasn't already on hiding after that West Ham loss, do you know what I mean? That shambolic second half. We drop points. We have to win. A draw is not good enough. A draw will be a massive slap in our face and something that Luton will celebrate a lot. So for me, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea need to get their act together and put this situation to bed. All right, let's check out some latest news, ladies and gentlemen, before we work up on the lineup. 
Pochettino says Enzo Fernandez and Gallagher are options for number 10 role. Look, I understand the Enzo situation. Gallagher number 10? I know there's a lot of people that's going to comment uh, in this video saying, you know, means he is a 10. Look at the way he played in Crystal Palace. Look at the way Crystal Palace played, ladies and gentlemen. Crystal Palace was a counter-attacking team during that time when Gallagher was around. Crystal Palace never came across where, you know, the opposition is going to set up in a low block and someone like Gallagher has to be the midfield maestro. The only way I can picture Gallagher being the number 10 is that he doesn't get to get, you know, he's not given that creative responsibility. He's literally given that second striker role just behind, um, you know, Nicholas Jackson so that there is another body in the in the box. And then you still allow Enzo Fernandes from deep to really play make. To have Gallagher orchestrate the midfield, be the playmaker, which is the number 10 role. Have a look at how Phil Foden plays for Man City and how many times he was trying to thread the ball to Erling Haaland. We're expecting Gallagher to do that. Gallagher's best trait so far that we've seen preseason and the couple of matches we've seen so far is off the ball. Is off the ball. With the ball, we can all agree. Let's not try and you know, backtrack now just because Pochettino has said these that, oh, no, you know, yeah, 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 Gallagher is a number 10. No, oh, come on. We've seen his best trait so far is off the ball work rate. He's a beast. He's a beast. And and against Liverpool, he was splendid off the ball. With the ball, the guy gets mauled. The guy gets, you know, dispossessed. He doesn't have the quality to receive the ball, have his back behind the defender, turn and drive. He doesn't have that quality. If he is pressed, you best believe he will lose the ball. So if we start doing these sort of shenanigans, and, and we don't have a proper plan as to what role Gallagher is going to play as a 10. He's not really a playmaker, more of a second striker, no problems. But if he starts acting as a playmaker, th that's on us. That's on us and that's on Pochettino. And as I said, Pochettino, no time to dilly-dally anymore. It's time to get serious. No more funky business with the lineup. Proper people in their respectful positions who understands their role clearly and unleash them and unleash them. Mudrik will be out for a few days and will miss the Luton game, says Poch. There you go. Look, I, I would have started Mudrik in this match. I know he had a pathetic game against West Ham, but he is a winger. So I would have given him a bit of uh, a consistency, a consistent amount of games. But now he's gone as well. So um, uh, I wonder I wonder what Poch is going to do on the left side. He's, he's already been preferring Ben Chilwell. And now that Mudrik is injured, there is no option of Mudrik. He's probably going to use Ben Chilwell again. That, hopefully he doesn't do that. Hopefully he reverts to Chilwell being a left back. Poch will not completely rule out Romelu Lukaku playing for Chelsea this season. Uh, I saw Klopp said, I will not be in the business. And they then they offered 100 million. And he says, oh, I made a mistake and something changed. Poch, this ain't funny. Brother, This you, you, think, you think you were being funny here? <laughs> it's not funny, all right? This is not funny. So, look, Romelu Lukaku will do a live stream tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you tune in. We need to talk about this. I'm worried. There could be a potential situation where he stays at Chelsea Football Club because there's literally no suitors. There's literally no suitors. Saudi Arabia has moved away. Al-Hilal, they're done and dusted with their transfer business. So, unless another Saudi team comes in, I don't know. Inter Milan feel betrayed. Juventus want to do some funny business where, oh, no, you take Vlahovic as well. We'll take Lukaku. You take, no, no. Just take Lukaku, brother. Well, what's with this Vlahovic business? You take Lukaku. You then sell Vlahovic however you want to sell. Why are you trying to, you know, throw Vlahovic to us? We're not interested. So Romelu Lukaku will have a conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about that. Breaking. Romeo Lavia needs a few weeks to be involved in the team, says Posh. Look, I think he, he may not be ready before the international break. And over the international break, he's probably going to get that match sharpness again. And then after the international break, he'll probably start featuring. So that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to wait for that. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chelsea. David Washington, the, you know, the Brazilian sensation, the kid, youngster, wonder kid, another wonder kid from Santos, um, Gabriel Angelo, uh, Angelo's uh, friend. So I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. I think, I think from what I heard previously is that, He's potentially going to go to Strasbourg as well. Um, you know, everyone seems to be going to Strasbourg. 
But we're in need for a striker, right? So I don't know. I don't know whether Chelsea are going to really throw him into the deep end. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's do the lineup. Let's get cracking on. Goalkeeper position is straightforward. It's going to be Sanchez. I don't think the new brother that's arrived at Chelsea Football Club, uh, Petrovic, is going to be starting as yet. But I think against Wimbledon, he may. I'm going for a classic 4-2-3-1. Classic 4-2-3-1, no funky business. This is what we did in the preseason. And this is how we should be looking at, you know, tackling the upcoming fixtures. Um, you know, unless something drastic happens down the track where we need to change our formation and our system, we'll see. But for the time being, let's revert to what we did in the preseason, pre -season, which looked good. And, and this can be changed around as a three of the back as well. You can literally just push the left back up and you can slide the three over here and then potentially have a three at the back where Marlo Gusto is a little bit more reserved. So for me, left back, chill well. No funny business. People playing in the right position so they understand their role. Levi Colwell on the on the left CB position. And from here, Levi Colwell is far more lethal. When he starts his positions from here in this spot, he's boxed in. In this position, a little bit more central, he can find those line-breaking passes through the middle. And I think that is going to be very, very important. Thiago Silva is, for me, I know he's not been the greatest so far. I know a lot of people have been talking about him in a negative manner. For me, he's still the number one defender at Chelsea Football Club. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Like, I'm not going to let one or two games sort of bother this situation. I know what level of a defender he is. Axel Desasi, please, brother, from the bench, Understand what's going on. Adapt. I can't have Axel Desasi coming now off the back of a couple of issues already I've noticed in the first two games against Liverpool, Luis Diaz, unaware, and against uh, West Ham, Antonio. Like, And there have been so many instances where Axel Desasi players have just gone straight past him. There doesn't seem to be that pace there. So for me, Colwell and Silva, they're the prime two defenders uh, combination that I want, uh, I'm going for. So I'll go with that. Malo Gusto on that right side, as I said, if you want Gusto to be a little bit more reserved and still maintain the three, you can with Colwell Silva Gusto, where Chilwa bumps up. Um, but with Caicedo now in the team, I'm, I'm looking forward to Gusto to, to bomb forward and help out in attack as well. Ender Fernandez in the middle, along with Caicedo. Caicedo, um, that shocking debut, brother, forget it. Don't worry about it. Yes, you didn't look up to the mark. The match sharpness wasn't there. But hopefully this entire week has brought you up to speed as well. We need you. I, I, potentially what I want to see is something like that where Kaisida is a little bit deeper. And Kaisida literally just will drop in wherever you know is required. If Gusto pushes forward, he sort of tucks in there to help out. If Chilwell pushes forward, he kind of drifts on that left side. So Kaisida just... Marshal this area, brother. Marshal. And if there is an opportunity to bomb forward at times and box the opposition in, no problems. Do that as well. But I want to see where Enzo is a little bit forward, where he's pulling the strings in midfield. Up front, obviously, we know it's going to be Jackson and Nicholas Jackson. You've got to put your chances away. There was a really awesome opportunity against West Ham where Sterling did that cutback and there was an air shot from Jackson. Brother, you have to put... like. The only way you're going to start getting proper respect for your name at Chelsea Football, you've got to bang in goals. As a striker, 100%, you have to bang in goals. So Jackson, uh, you know, he's apparently vowed to score goals against, against Luton. So I'm looking forward for him to at least open his account with a goal. If not, a couple of goals would be fantastic. Here's where the conundrum starts, right? This is what I would do. This is what I would do. I would have Ian Martin here. I think Ian Martin, all of a sudden, this guy's disappeared. Had a sensational preseason. Goals, assists, a lot. He's even showed the quality that he has the technical ability to play centrally, receive the ball, turn and drive and find players like <clears throat> Nicholas Jackson. So we saw that assist that Matt Martin had for Jackson in the preseason. I don't understand why we are not use, utilizing his quality. All of a sudden, we've forgotten about Martin. I think Martin in that position will be very much suited, and he's always looking up to find a player like Jackson. I'm not sure if Gallagher in that position really will suit, but I think what Mr. Maurizio Pochettino will do is he will have Gallagher here. I think he will have Gallagher here. 
So that's why I've got Gallagher in the second uh, tee. I think he's going to have Gallagher there. My preference would be Ian Martin. On the right side, ladies and gentlemen, I would do, <clears throat> I would, I would have, I would have Sterling here. Because Sterling from this position is unpredictable. We've seen what he was able to do against West Ham. He can be direct and go in that angle and attack the defenders, or he could go out to the byline and, and then bring the bring the ball back in for Jackson. So Sterling for me from that right side is quite unpredictable. Whereas Madueke on that right side. Is very predictable. You know he's either going to cut in, and if he does go to the byline, he does not have a strong enough right foot to whip in a proper cross. So I rather have Sterling there, and I rather utilize Madueke on the left side, where I tell the player, brother, you've got a left foot, hit the byline and cross the ball in. You know, take your players on, no problems. Be as wide as possible on the left side over here. Take your players on, sort of come in like this, but then straighten up and try and go for a cross. Much like what Leroy Sane used to do for Man City. And I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying similar roles. Do that. So this would be my lineup. I'm just concerned, ladies and gentlemen, that Maurizio Pochettino is probably going to have Chilwell in this Madi position. He's going to have Colwell there. He's going to have Axel de Sassi, Silva, and Gusto. And... He's, he's potentially going to have a Gallagher over there. So I think what Maurizio Pochettino is going to do is something like this. I, I truly think he's going to do this because so far he's done this. And I feel like he's probably going to continue doing this and um, it's going to annoy me. It's really going to annoy me. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know. This is my lineup, my, my personal lineup. And then I've also put the predicted lineup with the players that are underneath. Uh, where where I feel, you know, Maurizio Pochettino might use those players. But my lineup is Sanchez, Chilwell, Colwell, Silva, Augusto, Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo, Medueke, Madsen, Sterling, Jackson. I've given you my explanation as to why I won that. Let me know your thoughts in regards to the lineup. And I've also given you my predicted lineup, what I think po Pochettino might do. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. My score prediction for this game. Look, as I said, we have to slap up Luton. We need to absolutely make some sweet loving out of Luton. Have to beat minimum 3 4 new. Have to. We can't stroll to a victory on this game. We need to start being serious. So that's my score prediction. Let me know your prediction, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys for a live early tomorrow morning, roughly around 9, 9.30ish a.m. UK time. We'll talk about Romelu Lukaku any other news that breaks. I think there's some news about Academy as well. Some of the Academy staff members are not happy about the situation where we are selling a lot of our Academy players. So we'll talk about that. So make sure you tune in on all of that. And of course, we're going to have the watch along for this match later tomorrow, uh, UK time uh, late. And then, um, yeah, review, preview, all of that, all of that coming your way. Till next time, everyone. Take care. See you. <clears throat>